Hello, Asher. Well, he's in bed now. Well, do you do you have his email address? Yeah, well, you just call in the morning, you know, when he, you know, he goes to bed early and he gets up real early. How's it going today? Yeah, I don't I don't think he's been away from the North American continent. No. No no no. I don't no no. Okay. Okay, bye. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Um, this is a very uh, big topic uh, that I wanted to talk about um, for quite some time. Um, and um, I just wanted to say, uh, you know, like what we're talking about here is actually, um, it's just uh, unbelievably, um, I don't even have the words for it, but it's basically we're talking about um, something on the earth here that um, will probably be important for us to understand for quite some time. I've actually tried to avoid the topic of Oceana, uh, and I wanted to talk about the Caribbean first. Um, and I wanted to just look at something really interesting first. So I wanted to like first put on some perspective of like how to look at Earth um, really differently um, than maybe you've looked at the planet in the past. Um, so uh, here, um, I, and I'm just so thankful to be able to try to help out with this, um, the understanding of this uh, really for the first time in history, um, and or really one of the first times, um, and kind of rethink about um, how to help out. Um, so, um, I would like to, you know, just thank Earth, uh, for allowing me to try to understand some of this, um, and also to hopefully work, <coughs> uh, with you personally on understanding, um, what's going on here. So, um, it's just, there's a huge, um, there's just hugely different perspectives about how to understand the planet. And I really want to be very accepting, um, of everyone's perspective, including the animals. Uh, one of my friends showed a little picture, um, of a cat or maybe it was a dog and that I were looking down at the dog or the cat and they said, wow, you have a soul, you have a mind, you have perspectives 
um, you know, the, the cat or the dog, um, you know, had a lot of concepts um, different than how we understand uh, life. I don't know if you've ever owned a dog before, um, but, um, you know, you get pulled around a lot um, and um, you have to, like, listen to different things. You start looking at different things. Um, for all reasons, you almost become a, a, a wild animal just like your dog or cat. Um, but really, we're talking about a uh, really interestingly diverse area of the planet. Let me get one picture for you. Hold on a second. So if uh, perhaps the only database um, for uh, species richness um, that's really comprehensive is this IUCN red list. Um, and you can download it. Uh, they require a login and an agreement um, to use it. Uh, it's primarily academic, I, I think, because um, they're concerned about people, um, uh, you know, just even traveling to some of these areas. And uh, it's really a privilege to be able to even see um, this picture here. So. Uh, it really tells us a lot. Um, it's perhaps one of the first times in history that someone has gone through in great detail and studied the entire planet um, species richness. Um, you'll also see there's a threatened species list here. Um, I kind of diagrammed this out. Um, I think it was you know a few months ago or last year. Um, but you can see um, what we're going about to study. Uh, the problem with this that, that you don't realize at first when you look at these two maps is that it's really great to have this information, but it doesn't show the ocean. Um, and really no one has ever really, uh, sadly, gone into all the details um, for the biodiversity for the ocean. Um, but we kind of know that perhaps most of that biodiversity is probably in Southeast Asia and essentially along the equator. Um, there's different species also on the North Pole and the South Pole, and there's actually whales. Uh, a lot of the whales have left... Uh, the warmer waters and actually uh, gone down to uh, off the coast of Australia and other areas. So it's really amazing to even be able to see a whale if you've ever seen a whale. Um, it's really awesome opportunity to do that. Um, but as I give this little discussion here, you can see I have a wide open window here. You can reach out and the breeze is coming in and I'm definitely trying to listen to the planet. Um, as I give this discussion, and I have my computer located right next to the window, um, and I often give up on all things technology related and just go take a walk uh, during any kind of discussion. So, uh, but what we're about to talk about, again, it's beyond important. It's hard to say. I mean, um, this is million, this goes back millions of years. Uh, this is the first time in history, really, that we have all these maps. We're going to look at oh, just so much information here. And, I mean, when in history have we had all this available to us? Uh, and still we have so many problems um, with the wildlife. And really it's, it's a, a responsibility right now to start um, working on helping out. So... Originally what happened is that I got this map here, um, <clears throat> and it's uh, um, it's basically the Caribbean. They don't even speak English in most of these areas. Um, there may be a live translation right now, hopefully, um, but um, I'm trying to change a lot. I don't. Uh, there's a lot of things that we need to re-understand. So this shows all the aquifers, and it's really the minor aquifers as well as the major. Um, so you can see these zones here are different areas where the underground water is essentially part of a consistent area. And then you have the river systems. Um, and I hope to make this really entertaining and really fun. Um, I'm just starting off with kind of a classical discussion about what's going on, um, particularly here. So, um, But we're hopefully going to get into some really fun details um, here, uh, I'm going to pause the video and, uh, thanks. So take a deep breath, uh, relax for a second. And we're about to talk about something that's extraordinary. So, um, what 
originally happened here um, is I started tracing a lot of these fault lines around the planet. Um, and believe it or not, this fault line, um, if you trace it to the other side of the planet, it actually goes to India and it goes to Puerto Vallarta here and it shapes this kind of uh, triangular region here. And then there's connected to that is kind of a circular area. Uh, and then you'll see on the other side of this fault line, uh, it heads out to Africa, and then this is the Atlantic fault line um, here. Um, I discussed this a little bit uh, in some discussion here, but really you're becoming an expert about what's going on globally really quick. What I just explained to you um, took thousands and thousands of years, millions of years to understand, and now we have it kind of on one map with all these earthquakes um, and just an unbelievable amount of information here. So. Um, this, uh, so it, it's just, uh, I wish I could move around here, but we're going to primarily talk about this Caribbean. So, um, this circular region, uh, as I was biking around, I kind of realized that it's possible that, um, the, not only the rotation of the planet, um, but our path around the solar system as each year we, we spin our planet spinning, uh, it's also on a tilt uh, of about 23 and a half degrees um, and uh, there's also the tilt of our solar system relative to the Milky Way and that process of spinning around um, it's it's actually very complicated we don't want to simplify it and we don't we want to actually talk about it spiritually because um, this process of what different people are working on and the wildlife is working on is different around the entire planet and I wanted to rush into this the wind is kind of picking up here a little bit um, and there's a particularly mysterious fault right through here um, I can't remember the name that I gave it but basically um, <laughs> for some reason my mom wanted to take us to the Cayman Islands which happens to be right here um, this region um, I've called as the spiritual um, I don't know what to call it but it's like a spiritual divide or spiritual that's not the right word it's actually the opposite of divide it's it's a spiritual um, gap of some sort um, or uh, anyway let, let me let me show you a different map so you can see um, what we're talking about I'm trying to keep this uh, uh, very straightforward for a lot of people because a lot of people um, really appreciate a very serious conversation on this but what you'll notice is this loop here and um, what we started to think because of the relationship between that fault line that heads out to India and Puerto Vallarta is that it becomes a reincarnation loop um, there's several different kinds of loops around our planet if you're familiar with the um, electromagnetic field for example the aurora is is this kind of like glowing we have the planet and we have these glowing things on the north and the south pole that does not happen on every planet um, we're very fortunate to have these glowing lights in the sky um, but that is because of a uh, because of the electromagnetic field of a planet and as we spin um, un unfortunately or fortunately um, it's really amazing that the um, a particle on the planet, um, as you start to move, um, if anything moves in the universe, um, even me sitting here, um, which I definitely should get up and go do something else, um, but I'm kind of desperate to explain this to some other people because um, I feel really sad about having to do all this wor this homework, um, essentially, and, and I'm really um, wanting to see what other people have to say. Um, about this but imagine this um, you leave the planet spiritually and um, that you are connected to the entire universe but you're also connected to the sun the moon um, and, um, and and in some senses uh, the aurora and on all these other aspects of the entire universe um, and it's hard for me to say the word un I, I try not to say the word universe because it kind of makes us think of something simple perspective um, of the universe um, but let's take a step back here um, and just look at the entire planet for a second so what did we just talk about um, we're basically talking about the aurora let me load up an image live image of that 
Okay, so there's this thing on NOAA called the live 30-minute uh, Aurora forecast. So you can see this is right now, um, and these are the glowing lights. I'm basically over Antarctica and over uh, the North Pole and Arctic. You can see that it really is very serious in Iceland. Um, there's some other diagrams that you should really take a look at um, showing kind of the patterns of this. So this is just right now, but there's different patterns uh, seasonally, um, and it also has to do with the sunspot. So the sun is not necessarily, um, it actually goes through 11 um, year cycles um, where it heats up and cools down. Um, it's not necessarily, um, and then there's also these explosions called sunspots um, on the sun that create sparks. Um, some people even say that it could take out the entire power system of the United States or Europe or anywhere in the world um, based on these sparks um, from the sun. Um, and that has actually happened before, um, <laughs> unbelievably. So let's go back to the Caribbean. So what am I trying to discuss here spiritually um, so we can get really out of bounds in terms of what we're talking about, not only logically, um, but start to understand the planet spiritually. So basically we have these glowing lights on the North Pole and the South Pole. Um, here's Antarctica. I'll just let us... <laughs> It's really slow because there's so much information here, but um, but basically we have these glowing lights, um, and you can kind of see. Um, wow, it's taking a little while to move here, but let me see if I can move this a little bit more so you can see Antarctica. So what's interesting about Antarctica is there's a whole plate here. You can kind of see the shape of that. But as we went through this, you can see um, this actually heads over to here. Um, this fault line here and then it goes up to India um, and it's loading really slowly just because there's just hundreds of thousands of earthquakes on this so I wanted to look at a couple unique things on this path um, you can see that this this does go through these Easter eggs here it goes through this other loop um, this is the only there's maybe uh, the, th the third area is probably in Oceania now uh, you can see the complexity of the fault lines uh, so there's kind of this area here and the Caribbean anyway my computer is kind of going nuts right now um, and also I wanted to try to simplify the discussion a little bit let me see pause this for a second so before you get overwhelmed uh, I want to say that uh, you already probably understand quite a bit more than most people on the planet have ever understood about the planet um, just in this simple discussion about the Caribbean we're basically talking about the equator here um, where most of the life on the planet exists um, for example the jungle uh, the uh, fish in the ocean um, all along the equator um, and we're basically talking about the Caribbean which is fairly close to the United States uh, and South America and even Africa uh, and we're actually looking at the fault lines here and we're able to see how um, we're connected uh, to other parts of the planet. Um, we even went all the way over to India, and here you can see how related to Africa and even the North Pole um, and even Europe here, right? So, um, and what we're proposing here is that we're all connected uh, universally and that uh, the Caribbean has this mysterious loop here um, that is kind of a local uh, reincarnation loop. Um, so while the loops that I've been talking about in the past, um, what I called the, I don't know, uh, Earth's electromagnetic field reincarnation, which I want to make very clear, I diagrammed opposite. So the arrows on that diagram are actually, there's a difference between gravity, electricity, magnetism, fields, there's all different kinds of perspectives. Um, and the when when something leaves the planet spiritually um it is affected by gravity but it's also affected by all these other fields um even unknown fields that we haven't even uh understood um for example there's new particles discovered there's all kinds of um fields beyond just the normal fields that we're used to um and uh that is a is a very important discussion as well but as we talk about uh coming back to earth or even transporting uh 
our entire existence and lives and spirituality around the solar system around the universe um wow that's getting really big into some topics um certainly we want to understand kind of a, a local perspective um and as we um i just keep thinking about i wish i had a diagram here um let me, let me get a quick diagram hold on a second it's really fun the first time you ever see this pic so this is the picture that we got right now i just looked up uh, this there's another picture that i was trying to find uh, but you can essentially see um how this works uh from a perspective very complicated on the inside of the planet um and kind of more straightforward as you get um to uh different areas um and basically going out into the deepest part of the universe um on the exact poles as well as when you get near the equator it kind of pulls back in and loops uh locally um and that's one perspective but actually um there's things called gravity anomalies i'm sorry to make this complicated i'm just trying to save everybody some time so uh a gravity anomaly which is definitely important to look at i'll just show you this really quickly um so you can hard to understand um this is for the entire planet um and you can kind of see that the gravity on different parts of the planet is different you actually have kind of the inward pole in the Caribbean and outward pole. Um, I have a whole discussion on satanic poles, um, which are essentially not just normal poles um, on the planet. Um, but uh, not to get you, you know, try to do your own uh, perspectives on this um, because we really need other ideas. Um, you can see a vast hole here in Sri Lanka. Um, and uh, there's a whole story here about um, one of the guys that worked on the original uh, moon landing decided to move to Sri Lanka. Um, I won't say his name, but uh, he decided to move there because there was a negative gravity anomaly. Um, but uh, going back to the Aurora, again, you can see this. And I just want to go back to this um, image here. This is a USGS image, and I love it because it has live earthquakes um, in the last 30, these are only in the last 30 days. Um, anyway, so take a step back from this all and before you get really concerned, like, oh my God, um, I, I was really scared when I first started starting the planet. Um, and then I kind of started to get some spiritual and logical strength about my understanding and was able to say some pretty far out things. But one thing I wanted to say is that um, if you're, just starting to look at this spiritually, um, yeah, there's a lot of homework to do logically, um, but you'd be very surprised um, how accurate your spiritual concepts can be of the planet. Um, I was, um, how quickly, uh, how I messed up personally trying to only understand the planet logically. Um, and you can quickly start to see some really important ideas um, spiritually um, and in some ways, um, the logic handicaps us because we're really talking about the vastness of the universe, which is not something that's just a simple perspective um, and how this relates to this loop here. So this is really one of the more, um, I don't like, anyway, I don't like to like prioritize things, but it's very important um, uh, loop here. And it's, and it's something that... Um, we're not going to get all the details in this discussion, but, um, and so let me pause this. I'm going to go take a little bit of a walk here, stroll. The wind is starting to pick up here. Um, I'll be back, um, to discuss some of these, but, um, what I wanted to mention here is there's, um, yeah, I, I just wanted to say thanks uh, for even taking the time to consider this. Um, it hopefully it could radically change your life forever. It can ra change the what's going on for the entire f future of humanity. Um, every detail here, um, and um, man, I mean, uh, you know what I wanted to really focus on is how to help the wildlife here. And I'm gonna go take a little bit of a walk, get some water. Um, clean water and uh, I hope you really enjoy this presentation 
and um, I really am looking forward to hearing from a lot of other people about it. Thank you so much. Uh, so I'm really sorry if I'm boring anybody here. We're going to try to get out as far out as possible uh, in these discussions um, spiritually and logically. Um, and um, I just wanted to ask for some help here uh, in terms of understanding things. Um, you know, this is really just a preliminary discussion and I by no way wanted to uh, you know, I, I, I wanted to try to help the wildlife here. Um, it's not just about human understanding um, and, and details. So I wanted to quickly discuss this diagram because it probably makes the least sense and it provides the greatest opportunities for other people to uh, participate in really defining and helping improve our understanding spiritually of the entire planet so what it's going on here so uh basically uh it's about fish um and we see that the bahamas here has a lot of very fun areas so it's not just uh in, it's not just interesting it's really awesome fun places for the fish to play to grow up to live um you can see the Windward Islands here. Um, sadly, those areas were really along the coastline historically, but the water has been polluted, um, and the fish have all moved into deeper waters primarily. Um, it's not just a simple discussion like that. This happens globally. Uh, let me see if I can get a quick map here to show you how significant this problem is. So... Uh, let's see if we can get this here. Vessels. Let's be a login. So, uh, let me see. Um, notice there's no pink boats here. That means there's no fishing going on. Let's go around the world and you can see um, what's going on. So, you start to see some pink vessels here. Those are fishing boats. That's off the coast of... That's thousand miles off the coast of India the problem gets even more significant out in the ocean um, deep ocean because basically it's hard to see so I have a couple other diagrams but uh, essentially man I wish I could get all these other boats off here so you could see the problem exactly but uh, they've hacked my computer or something so uh, basically uh, these are the fishing, the, a lot of the fishing boats, uh, you can see a couple of them in here, um, but it's really changed um, the history. I mean, they, they scrape the ocean, so um, it's really bad uh, <laughs> what has happened. So um, you can see that for this, for this matter, really Cuba, Haiti, and uh, Florida, Miami particularly, it's really only, you can sail in less than 24 hours um you can even take a jet ski to get to the bahamas so um it's really close to miami actually um and this is only 90 miles from cuba to uh key west so um basically this area here is very vital um and really the coastline is as well so um there's also some other things i wanted to show um Sorry, um, this just completely blew my mind um, looking at the geology here. Um, particularly just, there's so many details that personally I, I found interesting on this. Um, but you can see like when there's diversity in the rock and diversity in the ocean floor. You can see out here, this goes to Bermuda. Um, there's just so much other areas, but this is pretty deep um, as a result being in the center of the Atlantic. Um, but off the coast here you can see these areas are very special for the fish um and the geology really helps us understand that a little bit better there's also this floor map you can grab this um it used to be navionics i guess it's now um garmin um, but you can kind of see some of the floor of the ocean um, this is what you use if you're in a sailboat or a regular boat um and uh 
I just want to talk about the farming here. So, and I'm really starting to rush this. I'm I'm trying to get um everyone on on the same page of understanding, but um not it's a terrible way to say it, but um but basically um there's certain things going on in the farming here, particularly in Colombia and then around Lake Mercibo and then out towards Trinidad and Tobago and then you can see Cuba here. Mexico is actually doing a pretty good job but um but it really is critical as they start to farm on the Yucatan Peninsula, particularly in near Belize, that they get the water situation correct. Um, they're not really doing farming yet on this side, but you can see that's definitely going to become a factor soon. So, um, and Cuba plays a huge role in this, um, as well as Haiti Dominican Republic, and obviously it's even more important as you get to these small islands, um, just because the fish have kind of gotten terrified of humanity and they've gone away so um but uh this is kind of one perspective here um let me look at this really quick with you um so what i was trying to express here is how this um kind of a spiritual concept is that this is the world's most important lightning lake um there's some extreme lightning here um and that kind of flashes out um, into this loop area so and you can remember probably from the geology that um, there was some interesting stuff going on here um, as well as this spiritual fault uh, through here um, and then a pathway for the fish to kind of get around so let's look at that one more time so you can see this carefully so you can see how the fish may actually get between the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere and that's uh, really an incredible journey when you think about it um, you know the fish may go along the coast here they've actually stopped fishing along the east coast entirely and they moved it up into Canada now so if you look at the um, map here let me see if I can find that sorry about this uh, here we go um, basically there is some fishing you start to see these pink boats up here but this is basically Canada um, there's basically no fishing along the entire coast uh, of the United States and even in the Gulf. Very little fishing. Anyway, so that basically explains the problem. Um, and we could actually try to get fish back into the Caribbean. Um, unbelievably, I mean, they're all kind of cold water fish at this point. So, um, and uh, it's, it's beyond my my understanding but the in asia the amount of fishing um in the yellow sea off the coast of uh, eastern china is just unbelievable and uh here you can kind of see from the uh topological map that there's definitely some different stuff going on here um particularly um just uh, in panama as you connect north to south um and this area needs to be carefully studied because the fish in this area um and the wildlife on land it seems like it's a simple thing but it's actually very important for us to get this right you can see just the, the mysterious nature of this happening heading out to the galapagos islands um and just kind of this uh ethereal i don't know what you want to call it species um areas so it's just amazing so what's going on here um you know there's just a really complex um nature of of how this all loops together and works between the northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere uh, you can also see a very mysterious area in the jungle here um this actually should be very carefully studied um it's basically in Venezuela, this river system, if you look carefully at this, this river system actually goes this way um, and goes towards Trinidad and Tobago. Um, Caracas and uh, some of the largest cities in South America are actually located right along this river here. And then there's a mysterious kind of mountainous region. Uh, this actually is perhaps the only region that could one day be 
um, viable for animals from Africa to live in. So um, right now there's a lot of people that might debate saying never transport uh, animals from one place to another and I definitely agree with those people um, but I also think there's something to be considered um, about helping animals um, have a good life and have fun and uh, try some interesting new things uh, not only on our planet but way out in outer space so what this is going on here there's actually an eyeball here uh, that I've been discussing um, if you look at this carefully um, this is we actually got into a crazy discussion about how this is looking um, there's almost a face here uh, maybe a mouth here um, looking over to Africa so we're pretty certain that Antarctica looks like a brain um, and let me get that up really quick so you can well so this is kind of a cross section of a brain with an eyeball here maybe even another eye here I'm kind of glancing over to Africa you can see an eye here um, like Victoria as well as some nostril uh, holes um, here and this is like the ear and we even had like an earring that we discussed here there's a lot of topics uh, way out there um, on the spiritual side that we definitely need to consider. So before you say, hey, that's not an eyeball or, hey, that's not Antarctica doesn't. I mean, Antarctica looks like a brain. So um, we're really talking about a lot of other details here where we have almost a halo above this perspective here um, and just a whole bunch of other stuff going on. So uh but what I want to emphasize here is these Cape Verde islands, these details here and these islands here, as well as these mysterious islands here, you can kind of start to see a faint how this fault, Atlantic fault works all the way up to the North Pole and eventually hits Iceland. Um, it's really hard to see that on this map, but you can see it a little more clearly on this. So it's unfortunately not loading very carefully, but... Um, I think it's trying to load the cloud patterns, but you can see how this heads up to the North Pole, and it's probably loading the clouds. Hold on, let me, yeah, weather. So, I'm sorry about that. I'd love to show the weather on here, but um, there's just such an important topic here. So, basically, um, what we are trying to look at here is how we can simply clarify our understanding how this halo above this deep passage this amazon which is not just a small river this is the largest river on the planet and it's many times larger than the nearest river and you can see it almost looks like a blood vessel heading back with the eyeball here um and what this happens here is that this goes up to the north pole and i'm sorry i'm probably um I want to get back into some basic stuff here. So really, we're talking about a way that we can contribute and help. You know, whether you have whether you have a pet monkey or a pet squirrel or a cat or a dog. Um, we're talking about fish here. So, um, you know, it, it's it's most of us deal with land based animals, um, but we're basically wanting to think about how we can help. Uh, the fish here so um, and this uh, passageway if you will um, has all the way North Pole but um, so I just wanted to uh, um, I wanted to trace this really quick with you like if you're curious on how this fault line works so you can you don't have to have all this information yourself necessarily so it's a little bit easier to understand this from the Indian perspective, uh, so I'm going to start there. Um, because it's such an obvious shape, um, it's just so pointy, it's so triangular, and it seems to point uh, to this uh, Y-shaped fault here. So what we're about to do is pretty extraordinary, um, and uh, I don't recommend pausing the video or trying to re-understand it carefully what i really recommend doing is having fun and trying to figure out how to understand it the way that you want to understand it but 
what I wanted to mention just for history's sake, because I I did it on purpose, I knowingly um, made a mistake um, how I diagrammed this. So I, I actually pointed an arrow going downwards in most of my diagrams. Some of them I may have even done upward diagram, but gravity would actually technically pull you northwards, not southwards, um, like those diagrams say. But the perspective is different when you consider the fault line here. Um, there's actually outward force, um, and that would actually point in the general direction of this, what we call the capital of Antarctica. So, of Antarctica. So, this is a pretty extraordinary thing. Um, I, I, I just... I want to tell you something about just hopefully this will make it a little bit more human this discussion I'm sorry it's so uh, brutally um, straightforward um, but um, my grandpa great great grandpa sailed around the world um, and he mysteriously just happened to be right here when Krakatoa exploded on his sailboat um, I, I don't even know what to say about that but what I would warn you is that if you're trying to make a plan and say, hey, I want to go here or there, when you're on a sailboat, you pretty much follow the wind. You're not, you know, scheduled to land on an airplane at such and such time and be in such and such place. You follow what the earth is doing. And that was perhaps the second largest explosion in the history of humanity or even first largest volcanic eruption. Um, and he witnessed it. And it's right here. Um, so... There's a really shocking thing. This is almost a bow and arrow concept here that you should probably try to understand at some point, but we'll get into that some other time. So let's go back to what our original discussion is about the Caribbean. Why? And, and I'm sorry if this is a little bit complicated, but I'm trying to give you a perspective of the entire planet so you can quickly not have to listen to whatever the heck I, or hell I'm saying and basically focus on doing other things with your life. But... Um, this fault line goes to this Y here, and then you can see a mysterious island. Um, we, <laughs> this might be the capital of Antarctica. Um, and as you can see, Antarctica looks like a brain. And you got the top of the brain, the spinal cord, um, and some other things. But you really need to know about this quickly. When you use a compass, it actually points south to this point right here. There's a mysterious island called Tasmania that mysteriously points to where the compass is. That's a good thing to know about um, if you're just trying to know about something about the Earth. But what we're doing here is tracing India here. So we're basically seeing where does India point. And on the other side of all this complexity, this fault line goes two ways. It splits this way and this way, but it actually joins... It joins on either side. It joins here on South America. It rejoins. So no matter which way you take on India, it's still going to come through to here. And then this fault line mysteriously goes to here. And we just got one of the most in unbelievably amazing perspectives here because we trace this on two sides of the planet. And, and that means that people in India are working on something like reincarnation um, and what that means is that on the other side of the planet um, we're connected both logically and spiritually it didn't take um, I mean maybe it did take these hundreds millions billions trillions of earthquakes um, to connect it but as you see there's a a thing here and this goes into what's called the eggs of earth there's so many discussions um, that I'm trying to avoid in this topic but um, anyway what we just saw here is we're coming all the way to Puerto Vallarta and also Panama so it splits again here and then it goes back and we're actually upside down now um, so let me just flip it back you're probably really confused and I'm really sorry about that if you're getting any headaches um, it's probably because this is blowing everybody's mind in terms of, um, I mean, this is the first time in history. I mean, everything we understood about the Earth is going to change, you know. So this is kind of a, a headache. Like, we were all sitting in school, and there's some big changes here um, with how we understand the planet. So 
um, because this is the first time in history we've been able to even look at this. So, uh, and uh, and it's kind of scary because you're when you first see this, you're just like, wow, um, I gotta work on this. This is unbelievably awesome. I, I would like to understand everything about this, and I do not hold that perspective. I just the perspective I hold is how do I help people and how do I help wildlife. So I'm really doing this to try to help people, uh, save them time so that you don't have to really um, do the homework. Um, we can kind of just sit back and laugh and be like, wow, um, isn't Earth unbelievably awesome? Um, but uh, what we're just looking at here is this loop. And meanwhile, India is working on reincarnation and we're kind of talking crazy talk to some people. Some people would say, well, how is the Caribbean at all related and that's where we're getting into spiritual conversations and what I want to say is make a jump into hyperspace and come up with your own ideas because we have really unbelievably perspectives that's going to be um, that that are just going to be amazing so and really those perspectives are primarily going to be from the wildlife right like as we start to understand the brains of all the species on the planet um, it's going to be pretty unbelievable to understand how they got here what where where are these what, what's going on um not only on our planet but around the entire universe related to life um so these these things are not going to change anytime soon so um but i did want to warn people a little bit about things you know there's um people have traveled to some of these locations and risked their lives um but um i think if my grandfather my other grandfather on the other side, um, he was a missionary, um, but I really, he never really told me that he was a missionary. Um, he, that wasn't like his thing, um, but uh, he traveled to try to help with water problems, um, particularly in Haiti. Um, and nowadays there's no government, no formal government in Haiti. Um, so it's just a different, <laughs> it's, 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 it's all about being friendly. If you're if you're a very very friendly person, even that might not even be enough. So you have to really um, there's just a lot to think about. So um, I I anyway. So I, I would not recommend um, traveling to any of these areas. Um, but uh, you'll notice how many earthquakes are along the coast here in Mexico. Um, one thing I want to talk about quickly is that you can see this is kind of the deforestation of the jungle in Amazon. We could move a lot of that farming up into Mexico. We don't have to be doing farming in Venezuela or Colombia at all. A lot of the food comes from Mexico and then it's shipped thousands and thousands of miles to, for example, up here in New York City, all the way to Mexico every day. So if they can do that, um, I think they can figure out how to not farm in the jungle and try to figure out another way. So but we're really talking about the ocean again. So let me pause. I'm going to walk outside because this is probably giving a lot of people a lot of stress. And I'm really sorry. Um, this completely stressed me out today. I was, wow. Um, so, yeah, I just, I was in such a rush to get the information out um, because some of these images are just so unbelievably awesome. So, um, yeah, so let's just try to, take a break here um for a second so I'll, I'll quickly go through this and probably just stop the video forever so because i really would appreciate not using my ideas and other people will probably have way better ideas so um i wanted to kind of conclude on how important jamaica is um particularly and it is a very african country to travel to if you're white it might not be a very wise idea to just travel to some of these uh, caribbean countries um and even cuba could be a major problem um but you can see that this is a very important pathway between the land and cuba also holds that key here and you can see um some other diagrams here so but jamaica uh really plays a huge role um, kind of in the center of all this um, as well as Puerto Rico Haiti Cuba these the, and, and everything really so anyway so I just want to say thanks a lot I'm gonna pause this for hopefully a while 
take some deep breaths, try to walk around, get some clean water. Um, and remember, uh, there's a lot of this discussion that we've never... This is only the surface. This is really about helping out the fish. And um, it's not just understanding what we're talking about. You know, it's the sad thing is I grew up in a very straightforward, logical family. Um, let's just talk about the facts of what's going on here. But really, this is about helping real animals uh, not get headaches. If you're having a bad headache right now, you cannot imagine how many fish are having bad headaches in the entire central region here, uh, Caribbean. It is completely hell for a lot of these fish with the dirty water. So, I mean, the headache that we're getting um, definitely can be cleaned up a lot here. Um, and we can start to talk about really cool stuff. When you can speak with the animals, um, the birds, um, like I mentioned the other day, I wasn't even aware when I was growing up as a kid, there was an African guy that lived next door and he had a gray parrot and it could speak English. And if a bird like that can speak English, I guarantee you um, all these animals can talk. So uh, that hopefully changes your life forever. And talk with these animals, talk with the birds near you. Um, you know, what I do sometimes is I talk with the animals outside my apartment. I tell them to do help me out with stuff. You know, I got, you know, I'm working on stuff and they help me out. And, you know, the one bird talks to the other bird and there sooner or later they make it to Central America or the Caribbean. And I'm working on stuff with the birds all the time. So I'm trying to talk with them and just, I got a new squirrel that's hopefully going to come into the apartment. And, um, you know, there's all kinds of things like that. So uh, what I'm saying is that you don't need to we can really work with the animals right where we live to try to help solve some of these problems so uh i'm gonna go take a walk i'm gonna maybe keep the video going because i'm gonna be pausing it um but just turn it off i'll turn it back on later you can see it and uh um it's really exciting i know like i'm completely um i mean <laughs> i don't know what to say you know um hopefully I don't want to, I, I just want people to have fun um, really working on this, and it really is going to be about the animals. So everything I've said, completely forget, it's completely useless, um, completely a waste of time, um, but being nice to your cat, to your dog, to the birds, like clean water right where you live, maybe go get a fish, um, start talking to your fish, and um, we can really start working on solving these problems. I'm going to stop it because I'm kind of terrified that people are going to try to watch this video. Um, but um, there's so much here, and I'm so thankful. I, I don't even know how to express my thanks. It's just um, I've been so fortunate in my life, and there's people. I, I know I have friends right now that are so angry watching this video, and they're desperate for water, for food. I mean, I got – there's people – I mean, they're, they're, they post these pictures with, like, kids and, you know, you know, think mud huts in like, I don't know what country, and they're just, they don't have food, they're just, it's just, it's terrible, you know, and, but, you know, we got to help the animals too, so I, I do care about everybody listening, and I want to try to help out, um, but we also got to think about something else here, which is the water, and clean water, and um, I'm so thankful, and I hope um, this has been helpful for you, and, um, and maybe it will really change your life. I mean, think about it. Um, I mean, this. I, I don't. I don't even. I, I don't even want to get involved. But it's like this is going to change so many people's lives, and I'm so thankful. But have a good night. See you later. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. I'm trying to get back here as soon as possible. Um, I think there's probably some people um, that really wanted to see uh, a few more details. Um, so let's zoom out here. Um, what I wanted to mention is don't follow the faults. Um, and uh, it is nice to just look at the earthquakes. Um, these fault lines have actually been um, estimated, man-made. Um, I mean, there's, for example, uh, you can see some streaks uh, in the Atlantic that don't show up as these primary fault lines um, and some other details like that. 
So there was basically someone that diagrammed everything in terms of the faults at one point in history. Um, that was a collaborative project. Um, and you can see all the complexity here, particularly on the other side of the planet. Um, but you can kind of see there's a diamond shape here. Uh, and if you look carefully, you can also see kind of a triangular shaped region here. Um, my computer is just really being terrible here. Uh, let me see if I can close out some things and make it a little bit faster. So, keep in mind, uh, we're talking about the other side of the planet. Um, we got this mysterious diamond here, and then we kind of have this triangular three side. It basically goes one way this way, one way that way, and one way that way out into the Himalayas. So, basically, it, it, it's a triangle, um, and in terms of the earthquakes, um, these are the last earthquakes for the last... I tried to download everything for the last 100 years, and it was just... I do not recommend trying to download this unless you want to basically work on it for the rest of your life. Um, I'll try to show everything here so that you don't need to download things. Um, but I just wanted to get such a clear perspective. I, I just wanted to really focus on what's going on this this triangle here. So um, how is this even possible? Um, what 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 is going on? So and then we have Tasmania down here, um, basically going to the South Pole. Um, um, this is the magnetic pole right here, pointed to by this, and you can see there's almost a fault. Um, again, a three-sided fault here, heading out to this other three-sided fault in the Indian Ocean. So, um, this basically is the brain of the planet, um, and you can see as we hit, as we head from Tasmania to that magnetic pole on the opposite side, we have the tail of Antarctica, um, and that's actually the first time I noticed that. Um, relationship between the tail and the magnetic pole um, but I've been looking at a lot of things here calling this essentially a slingshot um, if, into outer space so you can see something really mysterious going on here if you look at it it's almost like a slingshot and maybe that's hard to see here but you can see there's just a huge amount of this is one of the most active regions on the planet located right near Antarctica and um, it's kind of got a loop here with a sub loop here and then this is the Drake passage um, this wind and the the ocean it's unobstructed around the entire all around it's almost like a halo so if you study Antarctica you'll notice there's the ocean is unobstructed so the wind can basically go all the way around the planet I'm not even sure it's that way yeah, I'm pretty sure it's this way but um, but basically the current um, and the wind it's very dangerous there's 40 foot wave 40 that, that's a huge wave so um, all is pretty common um, around the entire Antarctica so um, it's very dangerous and we talked about Antarctica University a little bit um, but I really want to get back, this back to the Caribbean so you can see this amazing slingshot into outer space where does that head unbelievably actually to Hawaii um, if you go out here into the deep Pacific you'll see that's Hawaii right there on the horizon and there it is there's Hawaii so you can see that it almost slingshots right through here and breaks it breaks this but I wouldn't call it a break I actually think it probably goes through these eggs first so and then Unbelievably, this slingshot actually heads to the North Pole. So if you go further past Hawaii, you'll see that it actually is going to head to Alaska here. I'm sorry I'm cheating because I've done my homework on this. And you can see this almost shoots things through this path. You can see there's kind of a pathway here. Um, but if you carefully look at it, I'm sorry, my computer's stalling. Um, but 
there's just so many earthquakes on this side of the planet. So, uh, but just imagine um, what could possibly be happening here. So, as we look at this, this is the spiritual North Pole um, because it's so mysteriously connecting two vast continents. Um, you can see there's like, I don't know if you've ever seen that picture where uh, uh, the hand of God picture where they're trying to hold between two vastnesses. But, and you can see there's almost a smile here. Um, and then heading up to the exact North Pole and actually the magnetic pole is right through there. So, um, and you can see this triangle here actually points to the magnetic pole here and then there's these mysterious three islands with a fourth island here and then kind of a boot um, and then this fault line is the Atlantic fault heading down and I'm really sorry to do all this but I want to help people out that might be particularly listening so you can see these mysterious islands kind of all in alignment here and then the magnetic pole the actual pole being uh, different that we the axis that we spin on um, and what's mysterious about this is Greenland I mean it's a whole another topic um, but let me try to help maybe someone specifically that's interested in this right at this moment so um, but you can see what I just did is I followed that fault line here and I want to emphasize there's a vast gap between the Mediterranean here and there's perhaps even another one that's missing from the Baltic Sea uh, from thousands, millions of years ago, um, billions of years even. So let me head that back up north, and you can see the reason I'm doing this is because there's just so much mysteriousness um, still left to understand um, in Oceania and Asia. So you can see this actually heads out to Russia, and it actually passes right through Beijing. So you can see Lake Bacall. This is the deep, this one small lake. It looks small, but it's bigger than all the Great Lakes combined in terms of water. So there's a lot of things that are not clearly explained, but that's a very very deep lake um, there. And you can see it's almost grabbing something here into the stars. You can see this is um, the uh, uh, part of the Milky Way actually out here. It's a little nebula uh, and it's just um, you can see we're heading back and I'm sorry if your, your head is spinning a little bit on understanding this but we got we got basically China here we're starting to head into Australia and then back to Antarctica and back to that triangle that we looked at on the opposite side of the planet of the Caribbean so it's really mysterious that the Caribbean would be basically on the opposite side of Southeast Asia and this Oceania and you can see this is Australia and we're actually heading back towards Antarctica I'm gonna go back and redo this again just so that you don't have to waste your time um, seeing exactly what we're talking about um, and you can see we're actually starting to hit that Tasmania again here and we have this very pointy area this is Dar it's called Darwin Australia um, and this heads to a fast mysterious island Papua New Guinea um, looking like a galaxy and then you head out to Fiji and New Zealand uh, but let me try to do this it's just so slow because there's it, it's a it's an unbelievable amount of information on this so uh, and look at all the details here um, but can you imagine the amount of force in New Zealand here so you can see New Zealand and it just is covered up almost entirely with earthquakes and just kicking something into outer space here so you also have I don't know if you remember part of the conversation we were having was the slingshot in Antarctica but this kicking something I mean literally it's a boot kicking Fiji into some place really far out there uh, and again this probably heads a little bit off of the spiritual North Pole maybe to what we were calling the vagina or pussy of the planet so you can see here is basically 
Hawaii. Um, but there's some very mysterious islands heading all the way out to here. So it's likely that because of the shift in all the earthquakes off to the west here, that this actually heads out to Russia and not necessarily directly to the Bering Strait, which is between Alaska and Russia. So you can see here, anyway, uh, there's a lot of homework to do here, but this is almost a vast dragon in the ocean and there's a lot of fishing going on here um, that's terrible. So, um, but basically, Let's get back to New Zealand for a second, or excuse me, to uh, the Caribbean. So the complexity is actually not nearly as complicated, um, at least on the surface. Um, you can see the shape here um, of this is almost identical to Florida as well as Lake Michigan. So you have... Um, all three of these guys are kind of heading down a uh, point here, point here, and a point here. And that's pretty much it uh, that I want to really discuss right now. Um, I'm just kind of wanting to help people see anything else. Um, let me back out here um, so we can look at this once again um, so you don't have to waste time um, trying to deal with technical problems uh, studying this um, so let's look back a little bit more so this path is actually quite interesting because it still is heading it's actually a faster path right so clearly it's more interesting to go <laughs> down south through Antarctica to get over to Southeast Asia and Oceania and that mysterious triangular region with Philippines and Indonesia. Um, but this actually is a faster way to get there, um, is heading north um, through California. And this is the fault line here, right? So you can see this fault is so significant that it actually split, split the, uh, it, it's actually almost a sombrero here. So heading out over to here. So let me try to, align this a little bit more the computers really just completely toasted right now on this um, um so yeah why we're waiting here I just was thinking um if there's anything uh, that you wanted me to personally look at just let me know um and I can try to help out I'm very interested in what other people say about this so you can see the computer finally started to load this up and and we're starting to look at the North Pole so we quickly rather than looking at the South Pole we start to see this uh, another diamond shaped region um, with kind of a maybe even a diamond shaped region here but more of a smile area and then this um, area into Russia And I just hope you're having fun trying to look at some of this. Um, and uh, I think um, my computer is just completely toasted out here. So um, I may have to close all these windows just to get this doing anything. Um, but um, Japan here, you can see, um, really starts to collect a lot of these earthquakes. Um, particularly just around Tokyo um, and just south of that area so uh, anyway what I was really trying to get at here was how to look at the perspective of how to relate <clears throat> this whole region to the Caribbean um, particularly for the fish so um, I'm gonna have to stop this video because the computer is just so slow. Um, but um, so I wanted to kind of close on the gravity anomaly concept um, that I was thinking about as I was walking. Um, 
so you can see that definitely this is one side of the planet this is the other side of the planet you have a red side and blue so this is negative anomaly positive anomaly um down here you say earth's gravity field anomalies um but you know i really think that's not the whole perspective when i first started studying gravity anomalies i was very excited to see just a simple relationship between oceana and the caribbean you can kind of see that's right just off the coast of puerto rico but it's not that case because there's actually a lot of outward movement in puerto rico um, because that's what an earthquake is it's actually coming out of the earth rather than going into the earth so uh, what i wanted to say is that um the gravity anomalies are very helpful to look at but um as you can see it's complicated um and there's something else that we still don't understand about the planet um beyond just gravity anomalies um and we maybe just don't have the right sensors and we don't think about it correctly spiritually we haven't tried to understand um, what that is yet so it's probably more related to the fields of the planet rather than the gravity um, so we just don't have a map of whatever we're trying to understand uh, about that so basically um, it's nice to have a one-to-one -one relationship here uh, kind of a cartesian coordinate um, but that kind of starts to quickly not be interesting when you're starting to talk about spiritual topics um we're not just talking about one-to-one -one relationships um we're talking about something very more complicated so um i do have all these other maps available if you're interested um you can grab this uh here um and the Earth at night, I didn't really talk about this because it's so complicated in terms of the human perspective, but definitely you can see um, Puerto Rico and Havana and some areas. So this can kind of help us understand not only the world population map, which you see here, um, where potentially people are helping and also hurting the environment, um, where you can work on. You can see this little island here in the Bahamas has quite a lot of people. Um, and there's also a little spot right there and then Miami definitely has a lot of people as well um, and it's really surprising um, along the coast so you can see Panama here and then this city here in Colombia uh, that I've been watching carefully as well as Maracibo um, and then you can even see Houston and some other areas Mexico Monterey um, and then even uh, here Cancun um, kind of a tourist town um, definitely contributing what's going on and this is the forest station map um, so I really it would be nice to get the bathymetric or the seafloor map with this and then start to see um, because what happens is that there's mangroves um, which are kind of like trees that live in the water uh, primarily and those happen down in new orleans we don't really see them in most parts of the world but they're actually very important because the fish love actually trees um there's a lot of trees that they just like to swim around underneath the water and hang out in their roots and eat the algae and fish and you can see some other stuff here so um i'm just trying to hold on as long as possible to help people that have never studied this before i'm sorry it's probably a little bit um basic uh for some people but when you think about it this is none of this is basic that we're talking about this is um i, I don't even know how to explain how amazing some of this stuff is so um what i would say is that this particular region here is getting a lot of new earthquakes this is actually based on depth so there's actually different types of earthquakes it's not all the same type of earthquake um that you might imagine so let's look at that just for a moment um, so you can see uh, the relationship here so this is kind of a nice map showing the, the history of earthquakes but this is just the last 30 days the other map the reason I'm using that primarily is because that's the last 100 years or 50 years so in the last 30 days you can see there's quite a swirling kind of in this so there's this mysterious triangle that we have um, and then we got these so basically what's happened here is that on the population side this island has almost been completely populated 
and they're planning on even populating this island entirely. So it's becoming a major problem um, on land and at sea. So, um, but there's some major earthquakes here, and we did discuss um, some important ideas about how to preserve. I mean, if there's an earthquake there, why should a human live there anyway? Um, it's also a way for the animals to communicate with the earth. Um, you can see there's been recently a lot of earthquakes right here in the Philippines. Um, so, uh, and then this is a very interesting thing here, kind of looking at how this connects between Taiwan and the Philippines. Um, and uh, there's basically no fishing going on in here because they've completely outfished the entire ocean area here. So, um, this is a separate topic, um, but it is related, and we still haven't even come to a good conclusion. I kind of wanted to get that conclusion tonight live as we talked. Um, I'm not sure if we're really going to um, discover something unbelievable as we actually look at this right now, but um, I would say that unbelievable part of the discovery is really looking at right here kind of the ring of fire right so we see this whole area kind of links the caribbean over to here right so we have we looked at how this goes all the way to india um but it's actually a horizontal link where we have a vertical link um kind of going north south um all the way around over to india so um this actually heads up north meaning that this spiritual north pole is actually very important to whatever discussion that we might have um, in the Caribbean. Um, and this actually doesn't show a clear link here. So you can see some of the debates in how people map this is that there's no line here, um, but there was a line uh, on the other one. So, uh, but uh, basically this heads all the way up to the North Pole and you can see um, quite a lot of water up there and what's interesting is the smoothness of this you can kind of see that um, and you can kind of compare that over here with the Caribbean right and you and basically showing how important the Bahamas is because there's basically nowhere else on the planet uh, like that um, there are some places off the coast of Africa if you zoom in really carefully you can start to see some of that light blue water um, it actually kind of surprised me to see some really cool um, areas off the coast of Africa here. Um, you'd have to zoom in even more, but, um, and then there's this mysterious islands here. So why why do I keep bringing this conversation to Africa and particularly to the jungle as well? Um, well, a couple of reasons, basically because this is the only jungle on the planet um, left in this small area here. Um, it's populated everywhere else and there's just vast desert here so it's really critical that we understand how important it is uh, in Central America and the Caribbean um, and this looking perspective I mean if you can look if this was a perspective to see deep into the brain uh, kind of the horizontal perspective of the planet you have this eyeball here looking out to Cape Verde um, meaning something very mysterious is probably going on. Uh, even this little area here, kind of touching between the two here. Um, and you can see some mysterious islands heading out here um, in the center of the Atlantic. Um, but uh, this just seems to connect so well between Africa and South America. And it turns out that the wind patterns actually don't, go directly across the planet here they actually head uh, from here to here um, so it actually becomes kind of a cross pattern um, that you might not expect um, and it's actually a very important topic um, but uh, before we get to but yeah so there's just so much to look at right here um, in the Caribbean um, I'm trying to not look at the most important regions of the planet because I wanted to save those for other people uh, to look at and help study um, because I know that I'm potentially some of my ideas could be a little bit off um, 
and I, but I definitely have a respect for trying to make a perfect judgment, um, both logically and spiritually, on what is going on. So, um, and making an effort to really understand. So, uh, anyway, so you can kind of see um, again if you if you missed the earliest part of our discussion, this we mysteriously my family mysteriously traveled here um and um it was surprisingly quick to get there from florida remember this is only 90 miles um so getting around cuba is actually pretty quick um but i, I don't know why we did this but it's just such a mysterious fault line here um on the planet particularly right through almost this area so uh, and you can just see how important uh, Mexico is going to be in terms of food um, because this whole area already was pretty farmed out. Um, there's not really farming here. Um, so California feeds almost all of America, um, and this is basically much larger than the area of California um, that we're talking about. If we turned off this map, I'll, let me get this here for you. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, sorry about that. So you can see there's just not much farmland in California, and yet that's feeding huge amounts of the United States. This is much richer farmland, and that's why Mexico pretty much feeds the United States. So, um, and that really can change um, trying to get, because so many people do live in the Caribbean. So anyway, I'm really sorry. Uh, I just wanted to say uh, thanks, and then... Um, you know, I, I'm kind of desperate here to get this topic over with. I'm really was scared as I walked up the hill, you know, the Facebook thinking about understanding what I'm trying to understand and then encouraging further research into the topic. I'm kind of wanting to stop uh, and work on other aspects of understanding our planet and the solar system and universe um, and just also just having fun. Um, and doing some other things. So, um, but uh, let's take a final look here um, and uh, just make sure that we didn't miss anything that you might want to personally take a look at um, about the planet.
And just a quick detail here, look at Egypt, you can see the Nile River just also being so important, um, heading all the way almost to the eyeball, right? I mean it does head right here to Jinja, Uganda, so just an amazing river. Now, some people say that Africa is actually splitting in half. Um, you can see on this map here, there's actually um, a separate Nile, part of the Nile River that basically is not always connected uh, through these major lakes.
I wanted to mention something super important. <clears throat> these Great Lakes, um, I'm actually calling these uh, spiritually linked to the African lakes. So there's not really any evidence other than spiritual evidence um, that these lakes possibly are linked. Um, I mean, there's so many Africans in Chicago. It's just... I mean, it's the truth. So, um, hold on a second. My dad is calling me. That's funny. Um, let me use this map because it's a little bit faster. <clears throat> but uh, you can see here that these lakes may in fact be linked to these lakes. Um, there's no other lakes on the planet. Notice you don't see any lakes here. I mean, these are lakes, but these are like two eyeballs. Um, there's a couple, a few lakes in here. So there's basically like a couple lakes in there. Um, but when you really think about it, um, the Great Lakes here, there's some lakes up in here, but with the significant number of African population, um, we also had the Black Lives Matter up in Minnesota recently. Um, there's a lot of things that you just got to use some spiritual judgment on um, and start understanding how different areas of the planet may be linked. So I really hope someday that a lot of Africans will really be able to migrate between the Great Lakes here um, and the Great Lakes here and actually get out of the jungle. So I, I really hope that if you are living in Rwanda, you going to come to the united states check out this area try to help us clean up what we're doing here this is all fresh water it's really nice to swim in it's really fun in chicago i used to swim on 18th street beach all the time i have a complete discussion on the de some of the details about the great lakes and the great lakes of africa um, and how they may be related so um here we have a definite look of an eyeball and an earring and this is called the horn of africa or the ear of africa so how that's related here is very complicated i would really like to see a discussion on what is going on spiritually with the great lakes um just what what does this mean you also have this whole area here um and just heading up into newfoundland and just a huge discussion on that topic um that's not really a caribbean topic but it actually is because the fresh water, there it just isn't... When I swim in the water in Chicago, you just don't see fish. When you swim in the Caribbean, you can. I have never swum in the Caribbean, but from the photographs I've seen, you can see fish, but you don't see them in Chicago. You don't see them in this lake. There's, like, no fish, and yet the water is clean, fresh water. Um, so why is that? How can we improve that? Um, it's so close to the Caribbean. This is a problem we can work right here in the United States. I love fresh water. When you go swimming in salt water, you really struggle when you come out of the water because there's all that salt on your skin. It's just so nice to go swimming in the fresh water, but at the same time, we got to worry about what's going on here. Um, and from what I heard is that the amount of water in the Great Lakes is equivalent to the amount, of, exactly equivalent to the total water in the entire planet in terms of the water in the air so that's a good thing to remember quickly um and believe it or not this one lake over here bacall is actually the size of the entire great lake system so you can just imagine how deep this lake is so it's kind of a different concept here in terms of lakes um that really should be studied carefully um but there's really very few lakes on our entire planet so it's just uh, Americans don't realize how important Chicago these lakes are. I mean, if we really started treating these lakes better, I mean, we got to really think about it carefully because it's the only fresh water supply on the planet. And when you look at some of the lakes here, it's actually quite murky because it's so much hotter. So the bacteria has actually taken over a lot of these lakes. It's just not this. You you can't. I mean, I would not. I don't know if I would even swim. I would love to swim in some of these lakes, but it's I, I don't I don't know what's in there. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but you can swim in these lakes, and it's colder. It's actually almost too cold to swim in. In this, I my friend lived up here, and I worked at a supercomputing company, 
in this area and it's just too cold to swim in even uh, this far north so it's nice to have it warm but in florida it was almost too hot for me to swim so i was just like man this is like i can't believe people swim in this it's so hot so um terrible <laughs> statement but um and bacall is even really colder so you can't even swim in it it's so cold so um and you can see there's even mysterious lakes that don't really show up on the map here um, this also happens in china you can see the color has changed quite a bit um and there's just so many other lakes here and i'm really trying to argue or even <laughs> not even, i don't want to argue but this is kind of nostril area there's missing lakes that you just don't see unless you really uh, look at it carefully so definitely i would really suggest if you're an african in east africa hey man check out this area um it's totally different world um and the safety here is really with the jungle it i don't even want to show you this image but i'm gonna have to show it to you it doesn't even explain how bad the situation is but you'll see in a second the population here is all on the edge of the jungle and it doesn't even show how serious it is i wish i could show what's really going on here so basically they're populating all around the lakes where are the animals even going to get fresh water from the jungle they what are they going to do walk into your house which i think is a great idea that's why i try to keep my doors open so i can i'm expecting an elephant to walk through the backyard anytime uh but uh you can see it's just hugely populated in this area and it's a very big question this is not what's happened around the great lakes in the united states so let's go back to the united states it's pretty populated but not nearly so you can see there's lots of fun places to live but the water problem is even more significant so although we would say hey and it's the jungle over there this is the only world's fresh water supply um it's definitely something to think about so um there's a lot of smaller lakes in here too but it's basically the ocean you you cannot see across this you it's like a vast fresh water ocean which is really unbelievable it's really fun to swim in so i highly recommend if you're an african to check out these great lakes um back to the conversation i think we're just trying to look at the entire planet here um, i'm trying to help people out so many of my friends um don't have a computer and they just want to see it because they're really excited and i'm really looking forward to some african perspectives on some of these ideas um so um because i i just want to have fun looking at this um i don't want to go through all the uh details but again here we are so we're kind of lost on this perspective where we are but look at what we've accomplished even tonight so hopefully you've started to see almost everything on the planet um and it's kind of scary you go through a kind of a phase when you first look at everything um but um try to help out as much as possible with wildlife so look at again the bahamas uh, which originally started this conversation and then just all these earthquakes around puerto rico and then the windward islands and then here so um my dad called me i should probably call him back give me a second here hello hey dad i'm recording this right now what's up why are you always recording well I don't know, uh, because people are probably sick and tired of listening to me talk. And thank God, you know. But, um, but I'm going to try to turn it off. Uh, I'm just, uh, I'm trying to finish this up. I'm really worried, like, you know, like, there's a lot of people that want to see about the entire planet. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you want me to call you back tomorrow or something? It's getting pretty late there, I guess. It would be really nice to have Chris talk about what he's trying to do you know um maybe tomorrow or something yeah well um like i said he goes to bed early mm. and he gets up early so if you want to talk to him you got to do it tomorrow before it's too late yeah <laughs> all right well thanks so much dad I'll, I'll try to call you back later or something have a good night. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. You just heard directly from the Odyssey guy. And uh, 
I don't even want to get into the stories about my dad. He's probably watching this right now, and no, he's not. He's got better things to do. Um, but yeah, he's. I, I don't even know what to say about my dad. Um, I guess I could say a little bit. I don't even know. I, I tried not to read the Odyssey. I, I was really terrified. Like I, I knew. I mean, it's one of those books where you're just like, yeah, I guess. I don't even know what to say about it. Like, so I don't even want to. I don't want to diagram it. I don't want to explain nothing about it. Um, but these guys. The only part of the story I remember is the part that I don't want to tell anybody. And everyone said they were gonna die. Like they were just. There's no way they were gonna do this trip. They were done with. Like it was just like no one does that. So I, I don't want to get into all the details, but talk about my dad personally you know he's kind of um let me look out the window here make sure the neighbors aren't listening um there's a guy over there on the porch or something i think he's you know trying to listen in here but and uh but basically the odyssey oh my god it's just all i want to say is my dad is um uh, sometimes you don't know your own parents, you know what I'm saying? And uh, um, I don't want to tell you where he's born. I don't want to say anything about it. My mom, same thing. They're, 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 I don't know what happened to them. You know, they, they came back to America. They were maybe terrified. I don't know what happened to them as kids, but they grew up in, you know, some far off land. And they came back to America. They didn't even, they don't, they, I mean, it's like, it's, it's really weird. So, um, all I gotta say is that um, it, you can get cursed. Like the amount of information we talked about tonight, you probably have a massive headache. Reason is because you could die. Like this is serious stuff. Like this is not a joke. Um, the kind of st the dog is barking at me outside. He's saying, "Do not tell them where you know the wild animals live." You know what I'm saying? This is not a joke here. Okay, so um, this is their houses. This is the fish where they live. And my mom and my dad, I mean, there's, some, you have to read the book. I don't want to talk about it on camera because it's just, it, I've been completely wasting everybody's time the whole entire night. Think about it. Like, we haven't talked about anything really funny. We, you know, it hasn't even been worth anybody's time. Except for the fact that we talked about too much stuff. Like, I'm just trying to talk about so much stuff so that you never have to think about this again and that basically you can talk to your dog and your cat and the wild man i don't know what what's going on so anyway i'll just tell you quickly um yeah my mom was basically born anyway uh in in jakarta indonesia um but, uh, and she, I don't know, she, don't ever talk to my mom. It doesn't make sense, okay? That's all I gotta say. Um, and, uh, uh, okay, so back to this Caribbean thing is that um, there are many perspectives, and I'm very thankful um, that, <clears throat> you know, that, that, that the way that I see the world, like, there's a lot of other people out there and this is completely going to be way more fun I, I can't even express to you how hilarious some people are um, I'm really ready to hear from Africa about these topics and the Caribbean and Southeast Asia the conversation is done in English this whole thing I mean um, is, is, is idiotic to talk about this in, in no, any kind of normal language at least we have a couple things i mean i helped you out here a little bit told you about this eyeball the brain we have we can look at some things here that we never saw in history before i mean that right there is look at we're looking deep into the brain and the eyeball here if this kind of stuff is is even one percent true i mean I, I don't know but we're gonna go into a lot of other stuff so um, and I don't mean to scare you. I, I mean, I do want to kind of spiritually, in, in, in other religions like Islam, um, there is a complete and total respect for spirituality. And, you know, it's almost to the point of, 
what they call as jihad. Um, you know, you have to really understand some things here. It's not just, um, you know, there's, we, we talked about some pretty amazing things. So, again, anyway, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. I'm going to pause this and stop and it's, it's, it's dead night now and, uh, yeah, 